What is up, YouTube? I am James, the movie critic, and today we're gonna talk about Zack Snyder's trailer for his take on the Justice League. Right before we hop in, I just wanna thank everyone for the support, it's been amazing. Continue to like the video and subscribe to my channel because I love making content for you guys. I am the biggest comic book fan that you'll ever meet, but even I am a little tired of the ups and downs of what DC has given us as far as content. You have some of the highs like Wonder Woman and some of the really lows like Batman vs Superman or the original Justice League. Now, in my Wonder Woman trailer reaction, which I'll put right up here, I said that DC needs vision, someone to say where the ship is headed. Even though it wasn't exactly the answer I was looking for, it seems like someone at DC heard me. Because this week at DC Fandom, they stated that the reason why the movies have been wonky, they don't really feel connected, the tone changes from each movie to each movie, is because DC lives in a multiverse. So with each director that comes with their own creative idea of how to express a hero or a villain, they get that right because it's not in the same universe as the movie that you saw before. And to me, that feels a little bit like a cop-out. Not because I don't believe in the multiverse, but if you look at Greg Berlanti's Arrowverse on the CW, you see that they created a stable universe that started it all. And then they begin to add Earth 1, 2, 3, 4, but they started with an Earth Prime. And so though DC shouldn't be a knockoff of Marvel with one universe, with all these solo movies, I don't mind them adding the multiverse, but they should at least start with something that is a central ground, a central anchor for us to understand this is the universe and then everything else is additional. What I did like from DC that came out this weekend was the new precedent that they set for the entire movie industry. They gave creative control back to a director after they released the garbage. I think it means we can look at a bad movie and say, mm, that's not exactly what was envisioned originally. Let's give it another go. Instead of remaking good movies, let's give movies that had a good concept and were executed poorly another chance. At the trailer opening, I was immediately disappointed. Why? Because I see a dark side with no armor on, on the front lines, swinging a giant staff, which if you don't know, Darkseid is essentially the equivalent of Marvel's Thanos. He's a warlord who kind of sits back as his subordinates and henchmen fight his war. He's playing a bigger game of chess. So seeing him on the front lines kind of turned me off and the fact that he was drawn so poorly and it wasn't something that immediately grabbed my attention in a good way. However, one of my friends, shout out to you, Grayson, let me know that this was supposed to be a flashback of Darkseid when he initially tried to take over the Earth a millennia ago. And that was when Atlantis was still at sea level, when the Amazons were still at peace with the rest of the world. So you had the Amazons, the Atlanteans, and the Green Lantern Corps all fighting to push Darkseid back. But this was young Darkseid, so it began to make a little bit more sense. I also didn't care for the music. Um, Hallelujah is a great song, but it took away from the action of what the trailer was supposed to deliver, in my opinion. It was a very artistic choice, but it kind of took away from the action that it was supposed to deliver, in my opinion. Before we get into what I liked about the trailer, go ahead and like the video and drop a comment below to tell me what were your thoughts on the video so far. What I liked about the trailer is that it seems like we're going to get a lot more of Cyborg and The Flash in this movie. In the original Justice League, we only got a lot of attention on the big three, Wonder Woman, Batman, and Superman, with occasionally a little Aquaman thrown in there, but Cyborg and The Flash were treated more like sidekicks than anything else. The Flash was essentially reduced to running fast and pushing people out the way, and we all know The Flash is much more of a hero than that. Yeah, he's still beginning, but he seems to have a decent command over his powers, enough to slow down time when Batman throws the battering at him. So to just reduce him to moving people out of the way was a little bit of an insult to me to who The Flash is. In fact, we get this scene in the trailer where the Flash looks like he's standing between time and reality. If you know anything about the Flashpoint comic series, it's when the Flash goes back in time to save his mom. And so when he does that, he ends up unwriting reality and essentially destroys time itself. And so he has to run from time, which is this giant white wall that's chasing him down in a broken reality. And that looks like the scene that we're looking at here. Now, I don't know if in this movie we'll get a hint of what the Flashpoint is supposed to look like, or if this is just something completely unrelated and the flash is just vibrating super slow motion and that's just an explosion in the background. But either way, I'm excited to see how Ezra Miller executes his flash. Now with Cyborg on the other hand, I'm super excited about this scene that we see in the trailer with him directing his hands towards the stars and pointing all these weapons and rockets towards the planet. 
I'm just gonna assume that it's the Earth, and it's probably the mother box's default programming telling him to destroy the Earth because it is apocalyptic technology. I was definitely happy to see Steppenwolf's armor in this trailer. In the first movie, Steppenwolf looked like a PlayStation 1 super villain. His face was super mushy, his armor didn't really have any sharp definition, but in this trailer immediately we see Steppenwolf in some really cool armor that looks like living tech, and it looks like he's someone to take much more seriously than in the first movie. Along with Steppenwolf, we see Desaad, who is Darkseid's chief advisor and his main war strategist, so I'm excited to see how they integrate him into the storyline. Ultimately, I'm most excited because in the first movie, there were a lot of plot holes and a lot of gaps that left us scratching our heads. And it looks like in the Snyder Cut, we're gonna get a lot of scenes that fill in those gaps and leave us with less questions and more answers. Tell me below what you thought about the Snyder Cut Justice League trailer. And thank you again for subscribing and supporting the channel.